government says it has its eye on the global financial crisis and the likely implications for Guyana. The Guyana Power and Light Company promises a brighter Christmas as government intervenes. And the People's Progressive Party accuses the parliamentary opposition parties of giving unspoken support to criminal activities. The details of these and other stories, business news, health tips and of course the latest sporting action in the Diamond Mineral Water Nancy and Sport News after these. Good evening, I am Janelle Persaud. And I'm Paul Moore. With this edition of the 6 o'clock news for today, Friday, October 31, 2008. Paul. Thanks, Janelle. The government is monitoring closely the global financial crisis and the likely implications on Guyana. This is according to Cabinet Secretary Dr. Roger Luncheon, who today outlined several key measures to tackle this at his weekly post-Cabinet briefing today. Edward Lane was there. says government is monitoring the global financial crisis and the implications it will have on the local economy. He says cabinet identified several implications and benefits when it met Thursday. Cabinet noted that the falling commodity prices in fuel, food, fertilizers, etc. impacted positively on the other's efforts against importing inflation. However, the accompanying fall in foreign export income, foreign export earnings, as well as the likely reduction in remittances, cabinet failed, could indeed put pressures on the economy and our foreign exchange market. The cabinet secretary says having identified some of the implications, several combating measures were identified and are being examined in detail. Cabinet examined the possibility of reduce overseas development assistance in the context of the crisis and the likelihood of more expensive credit and less concessionary borrowing from the IFI, the international financial institutions, all of which could have, could have a negative impact Dr. Luncheon also disclosed that government has already put a plan in place to deal with the fall, pointing to what was highlighted in the recently released mid-year review. Addressing Guyana's qualification to benefit from the Millennium Challenge account, Dr. Luncheon said Guyana was chosen after being compared with several countries. He noted that many were questioning Guyana's economic performance, governance and other areas, and the results of the comparative put many of these questions to rest. On the basis of this comparative analysis, the way in which Guyana ended up in threshold program and outperforming a vast number of other countries, developing and otherwise, would need some answers from those who particularly criticize Edward Lane, the 6 o'clock news. The Guyana Power and Light Company says while its generation position has stabilized in Demerara and Babis, the situation still remains tight. However, Prime Minister Samuel Hines and Board Chairman Winston Brassington have expressed optimism that this will improve before Christmas. Here is Shah Dalal with more. Prime Minister Samuel Hines says although the Guyana Power and Light Company has been faced with shortfalls, there have been attempts to improve its services but we've had some setbacks from time to time. These setbacks largely come out of the struggle of the government and GPL to meet requirements, to meet growing requirements for electricity, whilst at the same time constraining any increases in the tariffs. While government has provided assistance to the company, the Prime Minister notes that several challenges still exist. Now we have had where we don't have the kind of uh, elbow room, uh, extra generation, maybe extra transmission lines and so on, additional capacity to allow for uh, scheduled maintenance, which, which must be, and also to allow for the emergencies, which 
uh, uh, will arise and arise in even in the best run utilities uh, from time to time. Earlier this month, residents in Barbies were forced to go without power as technical failures gripped the generation plants at Skeldon on Vuak and Kane Field. Demerara was also faced with blackouts when the war cellar units went down. These have since been remedied, with Barbies now equipped to generate 15.5 megawatts of electricity. While Demerara, the overall situation has been improved, with a grid capable of supplying some 77 megawatts for the Christmas period, and GPL Chairman Winston Brassington believes that this will be adequate for the projected increases in December. We believe that we, we will be covered. Um, again, the same caveat as I said for Babis, part of the generator, part of the uh, capacity is aged, and, and you have to um, expect that not everything will work 100% of the time. Um, uh, at 100 percent capacity but we believe that we uh, have a reasonable position of ensuring that we have no blockouts at Christmas. He attributes the strain on GPL resources as a result of overwhelming customer demand and shift by industrial consumers to the national grid. However, Brassington is hopeful that the three government-funded capital projects, which will come on stream next year, will provide a permanent solution to these problems. Reporting for the 6 o'clock news, I'm Shardalal. President Barajagdio says Guyana has contracted an independent company to assess the value of its forests as it relates to mitigating the effects of climate change. The Guyanese leader says this is all part of the country's drive to promote sustainable forest management and compensation for countries with standing forests. Edward Lane reports. President Barajagdio has once again lashed out at the international donors for poor support for the sustenance of standing forests, pointing to the World Bank's program of reducing emission for deforestation and forest degradation are red. He says this program encourages bad forest practices as it compensates countries that have damaged their forests. And this is why our lobby in this part of the world should be consistent. We have to partner with the, the NGOs in Europe who, and, and in the U.S. There are many good NGOs who are working with us on this cause. We have contracted the McKinsey and Company to do some, some real work on Guyana. The Guyana case looking at um, the, what value our forest um, has if you were to price it um, based on a carbon trading mechanism using different methodologies. What would be the adaptation costs for climate change here in Guyana? The president disclosed that following this assessment, government will be going public with the findings. When we present the findings of the McKinsey study, we'll have a national con uh, conversation, consultation, that you, some of you will come back out and participate in that because 